Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Mr. G again. Today we are going to be looking at power inverters. So power inverters, what are they? Well, all of the power supply circuits that we have looked at so far uh, in your electronics study has to do with converting an AC into a DC signal. So AC into DC. So we looked at the process in the last video when we looked at the switching regulator, switching power supply. And, you know, we take the AC signal, we put it through a transformer, then we take that signal and we rectify it, and then we filter it out a little bit, and then eventually you end up with DC. What a power inverter does is it does the complete opposite of this system and goes from a DC signal and what you get out in the end is a sine wave. So what we're going to be looking at today is a very, very crude version of a power inverter. It's not going to be a pretty sine wave that ends up out of our circuit. It's going to be kind of square-ish, um, not perfect down the center, but it is a power inverter circuit, which means what we end up with is an AC signal at the end. Now, remember, AC does not mean that it's a perfect sine wave. So AC actually has nothing to do with the sine wave. AC stands for alternating current. That means current is flowing in one direction on the positive side, and then current switches over to the negative side. So even if I had something that kind of looked like this, which is kind of what we end up with in this lab, this is still AC. It's very crude. It's not a nice smooth sine wave, but it is still an AC signal. So we have a positive so current is flowing in one direction, and then we have a negative current is flowing in an opposite direction. So a power inverter is used when we have to convert DC, so a battery supply if you will, into something that is an AC signal for powering AC equipment. So where does this all get used up? Well, in today's technologies, Power inverters are a very, very huge thing. So in all of our sustainable energies that we're looking at, the power must be stored somewhere. So if we're taking a windmill, what happens when the wind is not blowing? So if you take a windmill generator, So you take a generator from a windmill and when the wind is blowing this is creating an AC waveform. That AC waveform is rectified and then filtered and then from there it's actually stored in large batteries. So from a windmill we have a generator creating AC. Some of that AC might be used right away. Some of that AC will be rectified and filtered and then used to charge batteries then this battery becomes a storage device for when the wind is not blowing. Think of solar, same concept. 
solar panel. Okay, so a solar panel is going to turn energy uh, into something that can be stored into a battery. What happens when it's nighttime and you have no sunlight, so therefore you have no energy being created? You must rely on what you have stored. Okay, so a uh, perfect example windmill storing its energy into a bank of batteries for use later for when the wind is not blowing. Solar panels, so when it's not sunny out, when it's nighttime, the energy is stored into batteries so that it can be used during the night. Now we have to use this. So basically we've got our battery So we've got our bank, bank of batteries. It's got all of this stored DC. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out how we are going to use that. Now we can use DC for a lot of different things. Lights and all that, they will all work on DC. You can figure all that kind of stuff out. But that's not much use for, let's say, your home. Where your home is wired up so that basically you've got all these receptacles around your house and what comes out of these receptacles is an AC waveform. Typically RMS value of 120 volts at 60 Hertz. So what you have to do is you now have to somehow take that battery energy and you have to convert that DC supply that's in that battery and feed it to your house so that all of the outlets, things you plug in, refrigerator, uh, your television, your computer, all that kind of stuff that plugs into an AC outlet, all that stuff must be maintained when the wind doesn't blow. So when the wind stops blowing, that battery is now charged. Now we get take that battery and turn it into something that is AC. And that's where the power inverter circuit comes in. So the power inverter circuit. It takes in DC and spits out an AC waveform, ideally at 120 volts, 60 hertz. Now, the majority of equipment, again, the majority of equipment, can take a very, very rough looking AC waveform like that and utilize it. Because you got to remember now, in a lot of the equipment, the AC waveform is sent through a rectifier and it's sent through some filters and all this kind of stuff and eventually it comes out as a straight line again to be used somewhere. So. A sine wave doesn't have to be perfect, but the waveform that comes out must be positive and negative, must be somewhere around the right frequency, and must be somewhere around the right voltage, so that the equipment that is designed to plug into those outlets can still be used. So that's the job of a power inverter. In lab number 11, we're going to be building a very, very crude power inverter. And the circuit looks like this. Very, very few components. We have a couple of transistors, a couple of resistors. We have a DC supply and we have a transformer. So. Basically what we've got over here is an oscilloscope, 
um, so that we can monitor the waveform as it comes out of the circuit. And again, the waveform that we're going to see, so I'm going to be doing this lab, it'll be posted up onto another video of me building this circuit and testing it out so you can see what the waveform actually looks like. Um, it will be crude, it will be more squarish than sine wave, but it is something that is very usable. And all it took was one, two, three, four, five components. So one, two, three, four, five components to convert your DC into something that is AC. There are many, many more uh, complex designs than what we have here. One of the biggest areas of research right now in sustainable energy is in the power inverter itself. Being able to efficiently convert DC into something that is AC is actually not all that easy to do. You want a decent sized uh, waveform coming out. You want it to be relatively sine wave-ish, right frequency, right voltages, all that kind of stuff. The more sine wave-ish the uh, waveform is, the more complex your circuit becomes. So that's why this one is very, 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 very bland, if you will. It's a very, very simplified circuit. Um, it will maintain uh, itself. It will create a sine wave or rough estimation of a sine wave, but it's a very, very simple circuit. So this is how it works. So you got your little power supply sitting here, our three volt supply, and we have two transistors here. These two transistors are switching devices. So what they are going to do is they are going to switch the circuit. These two resistors are there to protect the bases um, from the supply. So basically what's going to happen when this circuit gets powered on, these two transistors are going to try to conduct. Because it's not a perfect world, one of them will actually conduct faster or turn on faster than the other one. So let's, just for argument's sake, let's say this one turns on. So what happens is, as we have power to that base, this one turns on. This three volts will then follow this line, go up through the transformer. Notice that the transformer is actually being run backwards. The tap is on this side. Okay, so the primary has the tap, the secondary does not. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this transformer and we are going to be having this side turn on first. So the electricity is going to come up through here. It's going to find its way through here, a current, and find its way back to the supply. Once it does that, you'll notice it will trigger the other base of the other transistor. When the other transistor turns on, electricity will now flow this way through the transformer and then back to the supply. Once this line goes high, you'll notice it turns on this. And then electricity will be able to flow this way again. And this keeps on happening. So these things are actually going to be complementary. One's going to be on, the other will be off. Then this one will be on, that one will be off, etc., etc. Okay, so as this keeps happening, the electricity keeps changing direction through this transformer. So if we look at it, we've got electricity that's going to be flowing this way. And then we have electricity that's going to be flowing this way through the transformer. And this is going to be complementary. So again, it's going to flow here, then it will flow here, then it will flow here, then it will flow here. So what that translates to is electricity will flow here, 
Then electricity will flow here, and then trans electricity will flow this way through the transformer. On the other side, the secondary side of the transformer, if I have electricity flowing one way through the transformer, the uh, current will actually flow one way through onto the secondary side. If then the current changed direction flowing through the primary, the current will change direction going through the secondary. So if current through the primary side was like this, so current was going in one direction on the primary side, current will flow on the secondary side. If current is going another direction on the primary side, current on the secondary will change direction as well. Now, this particular transformer, the way it's marked, is we have an 180 degree inversion. Some transformers invert. So if, if current is going positive on the primary, it will actually go negative on the secondary. If current is going negative direction on the primary, it will go positive on the secondary. Other transformers you will see will have a symbol like this, meaning that positive on one side means positive on the other, negative and negative accordingly. This transformer just happened to be the one that I grabbed when I, uh, when I designed this circuit. I do not know if the transformer that we'll be using is actually uh, in phase or out of phase transformer between the primary and secondary side and really it doesn't matter in this lab. So what is important is that when current is flowing in one direction it causes one direction to flow in the primary or in the secondary. When current flows in the opposite direction through the winding of the primary, current flows in the opposite direction in the secondary. So if we looked at this and we could say that here is our primary side and this would be what happens in our secondary side. Okay, so again a primary increase will cause a secondary increase going one direction. A secondary negative will cause a pri oh, sorry a primary negative will cause a secondary negative as well okay or again depending on which way the transformer is wound a positive on one side will cause a negative on the other a negative on one side will cause a positive on the other so what that ends up being is if we had something kind of like that coming in we would end up with either that going out or that going out, depending on which way the transformer is wound. So doesn't matter in our lab which transformer we happen to have. All that is important at this point is that if you have a one direction here, it causes one direction here. If this changes direction, then this changes direction. So again, if we looked at 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 2. The 2 is always opposite to the 1. The 2 is always opposite to the 1. The 2 is always opposite to the 1. So every time there is a change in direction in the primary, it affects a change in the direction of the secondary. Our little transformer here is a uh, 1 to 10 transformer. So basically this 3 volts will not only uh, end up uh, as a sine wave, it will also end up as a larger sine wave. So three volts will actually put out um, more voltage than uh, what we get in. Okay, so um, again, the, the transistors, the transistor's job is to switch between directions of current either through that side of the coil or that side of the coil, which translates into change of direction onto the secondary, putting a sine wave type waveform or an AC waveform out here on the output. 
The resistor values. Resistor values are important. The resistor values in this particular lab will actually set up the frequency. So when we swap out, and we will be swapping out the resistors in the lab, when we swap out the resistors in the lab, one of the things that you're going to notice is that the, uh, the frequency of the sine wave will change. So basically it's how fast these things react and switch to each other. Okay, so we'll notice that there's a change in the resistance value, changes the frequency. So um, part of the result in the lab, we're going to see the correlation between the values of these and the frequency at the output. It doesn't affect the value really at the output, um, so to speak, but it will affect the frequency. Okay, so uh, it's how fast these things are actually turning on and current can actually flow. Okay, so uh, a big job of those is to change or check the frequency. And when we look back, the DC into the power inverter to some kind of an AC waveform, the DC into the power inverter into some kind of an AC waveform. Again, very, very crude, very, very simple version of a uh, power inverter. There are many different circuits for this, more complex, um, but for all of our uh, lab time, if you will, this is a very simple circuit. It does work. Uh, it puts out a crude AC waveform, which you will see when I do the lab, but it is a very, very uh, simple power inverter circuit. So that's power inverters, a uh, very, very simplified circuit, and uh, we'll, I'll be posting a video very soon of me doing this experiment so that you can see what the waveforms look like and how things change when the resistor values are swapped out. So I hope this helps and everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.